Thank you very much, uh, Corey. Uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> it's great to be with you uh, today. Uh, a lot happens in 48 hours, and uh, I want to first of all extend my appreciation to Laura, to Kevin, and to Dean uh, for being here. Uh, you know, this this man up here, Kevin Doherty, is uh, is was recently elected for the first time. And as uh, as Corey mentioned, for me, uh, June 21 is going to be 17 years. So, okay. Set your goal. <laughs> uh, Kevin has uh, was appointed by uh, Premier Wall to uh, to serve on the Treasury Board. The Treasury Board is a group of six of us. Uh, Minister of Finance chairs Treasury Board. Probably for some of you, this is this is not news. Uh, but uh, Kevin, uh, as a new member, joined Treasury Board this year, and I can tell you what an asset. Uh, just a tremendous uh, person to have on the board with such knowledge, but also dedication. And uh, you know, I uh, I cracked the whip. Uh, pretty good, and uh, I uh, I try to do that uh, myself. Uh, work hard and, and do the best I can. And I can tell you, Kevin has done exactly that. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the budget. You've seen uh, many of you uh, uh, heard, of course, the budget on Wednesday. You've seen the reactions by media, by press. Uh, you've, you've been able to read a lot uh, about about the budget. You can see a couple of uh, things that are up here. Uh, some of the some of the uh, points uh, I won't say that the most important points, but but many of the things that we want to do. The very thing, the first thing you're going to notice is at the very top there's something called uh, TP, the Saskatchewan event. Last year, the theme of uh, my first budget uh, was the Saskatchewan event. We believe that Saskatchewan has an event. A lot has happened in the last four years. A lot of it has happened. Uh, that is not necessarily government. It's the hard work of the people of the province of Saskatchewan that have moved us forward. And we want to make sure that we can keep that event. We want to be able to be leading the nation. And, uh, you know, I think you saw that. I'm going to be a little bit political here. You saw that in the campaign back on, uh, you know, the, uh, four weeks before November 7th. There were two issues. One that said, you know, Saskatchewan is doing pretty well. The economy is doing good. So let's go spend. Let's spend, let's make sure that we're into the billions of dollars worth of, of uh, expenses. And the other side said, Saskatchewan is doing well, the economy is doing good, but let's make sure that that, that spend is sustainable. That, let's make sure that that growth continues. And I think, uh, you know, pretty clearly, the people of the province uh, want uh, an approach that, uh, that I think reflects our position. I don't have to, uh, you know, mention too many places in the world about uh, you know what's going on, but all you have to do is even look right here within Canada. Look at Ontario. Look at the chaos that has been created there, and uh, you know the fact that the province of Ontario, which uh, you know, is, many would refer to it in the 60s and the 70s as the as the boom place in, in Canada, uh, they're in trouble. They're not going to have a, a balanced budget for many many years, and uh, that was uh, something interesting. And I was uh, one of my first finance ministers. Uh, meetings, uh, Minister Flaherty, Federal Minister Flaherty, had a chart, and on the chart, it was when do uh, certain provinces, territories, etc., when do, when will they have a balanced budget with a surplus? There was one uh, province missing. It was Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan wasn't on the chart because we have a balanced budget, and that's something that we wanted to ensure stayed uh, here in the province of Saskatchewan. We wanted to keep those promises that we made in the election campaign. We wanted to make sure that our economy remains strong. And we have to ensure that, of course, we work within a balanced budget. That was the goal. And I can tell you, Kevin, Kevin being part of Treasury Board, that very first ask when we came back after the election of November 7th, and the Premier had appointed the Treasury Board, and we got to work in, uh, in December, uh, just I think our last meeting was December 22nd or 23rd, them. I, they, 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 I, they convinced me to give them Christmas Day off. So uh, we we had a lot of work to do because you know ministers come uh, uh, forward. I you know the uh, federal uh, former federal minister Ralph Goodale's here, and he knows all about those things, having been there. He, he asks so many. The Christmas wish list is huge. And if we would have looked at all of those things, probably we'd be looking at about a billion in, in, in deficit. So there are there are choices. There are priorities that we need to, to uh, uh, identify and that we need to then focus on what, what does government do. We made some promises during the election campaign and we were going to keep them, but we were going to keep them within the framework of 
a, uh, somewhere between a 3 and it's, uh, 3.5 to about a 4.5 uh, budget bill. And we worked on that. And our operating budget, you'll, you'll note uh, in my remarks on Wednesday, the operating side of our budget this year is at 3.9%. Overall, it's a 4.7% budget, but that means 3.9 on operating and then uh, the balance on infrastructure. We have already mentioned, the Premier has mentioned this, and I've mentioned this uh, publicly. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, at maybe a model that other provinces use where we're going to separate. We're going to separate capital from operating. Because operating, unless you're going to significantly reduce programs, unless you're going to significantly uh, uh, alter those programs or cut those programs, your operating is pretty, pretty constant. It's going to be up by inflation. It's going to be up by any new programs you introduce. But on the other side, infrastructure. And infrastructure in this province, we know that there's a huge deficit. It's literally billions of dollars. Uh, I was asked by the media yesterday, I think, and the ones maybe the day before as well, you know, if you had something extra in the budget, what would you spend on? Me, personal. Well, I can tell you, it would go to infrastructure. It would be two things I indicated. Infrastructure, of course, being down debt. Because we've made some significant progress on debt, and now we're using those dollars that we've saved uh, from uh, in, on interest costs, we're using them to do some of the things that you see on the board. So our budget is $11.2 billion. Uh, that's the total amount uh, growing, uh, has grown significantly. It's balanced, and it's balanced on both models. Uh, I do get into uh, arguments with the provincial auditor. <laughs> the provincial auditor believes we should only be budgeting on, on I say only, uh, on, on a summary financial basis. We've, we've decided in this province, it's been done by the former government, we're going to continue to do it. We do both. We budget on a general revenue fund side, and that budget is going to show that there is a $95 million surplus. That's all the ministries, okay? That's the 18 ministries. Everything that goes on with your tax dollars and agriculture and education and post-secondary education, highways, you name it. That's all on the general revenue fund side. On the summary financial basis, of course, that's everything the government is involved in. That's all the crowns. That's the regional health authorities. That's the school boards, uh, uh, workers' compensation board, uh, crop insurance. You know what I mean? It's uh, page 82 and 83 in the, in, the, uh, in the budget book, if you want to take a look at that. And that shows you everything else. And we're balanced on that basis as well. We're going to have about a $15 million surplus yeah, in, in that respect. So we do both for the people of Saskatchewan. They can see where the ministries are, and they can also see then the whole picture of government. We're committed to, to uh, at this moment, we're committed to staying that way. Because, again, if we weren't doing summaries, I, I'd, be, uh, I'd be supporting the auditor and saying, yes, you have to do summaries. But we do both. We do the budget, and then at mid-year, we do a summary financial statement update. So I think there's an advantage to being in Saskatchewan, uh, because we, we try to be as transparent as possible with you. The other side of the, of the equation as well in, in building a budget is that we have something called the Growth and Financial Security Fund. That's our rainy day fund. Uh, someone said, well, I'll just call it the Heritage Fund. No, it's our Growth and Financial Security Fund. And what happens is that uh, every year uh, when a uh, year end occurs, which will be on March 31, we're projecting a surplus in the GRF. Our uh, legislation says half of the surplus in that uh, in the uh, uh, GRF must go into the growth and financial security. So as a result of this year's budget, we're projecting we're going to have $756 million in the growth and financial security. That's there for an, an unexpected occurrence. And uh, I can tell you last year, that last year was my first budget, and I stood and I said, you know, we have a balanced budget on the GRF, and we also have a balanced budget on the summaries. And then along came Mother Nature. And $360 million later, uh, for flooding through uh, you know, 8 million acres not being seeded, we had uh, an additional $360 million worth of expense. So on the summary side, we did not have a balanced budget. On the GRF, we did, because there were certain other revenues that were coming into government that allowed us to meet that challenge. And we did not use the growth of financial security fund in, uh, in fact at all. There's a little bit of, and I want to clarify this, I don't know if there's any media today. The, the, the uh, production of the numbers 
would suggest if you look at them, say, oh, well, they use the growth fund. Because it says right on the line here that there's $325 million that came out of the growth and financial security fund. We said it in the budget. We said we were going to pay down debt by $325 million, and we did take that from the growth fund, as we said we would, and we paid down $325 million worth of debt. What does that mean for the province of Saskatchewan? Well, four years ago, that number was well over $6 billion worth of GRF debt, and today it's at $3.8 billion. It's down significantly. And uh, if you, the four-year projections, the three outgoing years beyond this, this fiscal year, uh, it, will, it will show that that debt is going to remain constant because we are going to work within a balanced budget, uh, both on the GRF side and, if possible, on the summary financial side. Great province in 2011. You know, we led the nation in so many things. Uh, we had an economic growth rate of 3.6%. That was the second best in Canada, even, even though we had an excess moisture and flooding problem. Uh, the private forecasters this year are suggesting that Saskatchewan again is going to lead the nation, and we're going to lead at a 3.1% growth rate. And they are also projecting that we're going to lead in 2013 with a 3.3%. When is the last time that you heard that Saskatchewan was going to lead the nation with a growth rate in two consecutive years? That's what I thought. Never. Okay. So we're, we're, we're pretty pleased with that. We're pretty pleased with the changes that have occurred in this province and the growth rate. One of the things that occurred on, on, uh, on uh, the day of, uh, of the budget was we had our new provincial population numbers come up. 2011, the province of Saskatchewan grew by over 17,000 people in 2011. It, said it was the, a number that was uh, surpassed, it was only surpassed by a number of 18,000 some people. And that number was uh, 1953. That's the last time the province grew by a number higher than 17,000 people. I'll tell you that I was a two year old, 53, so now you know how old I am. <laughs> We're not going to make any changes. We said, you know, there was criticisms about, uh, about taxation. We're not increasing a single tax. Not one tax is changing. In fact, the only, the only uh, tax that actually is being reduced in the province of Saskatchewan, and I announced this back in December yet, yeah, is uh, the indexation of personal exemptions. We follow an indexation model that says that if the indexation rate was, as in this case, 2.8%, all of those exemptions that you have, were enhanced on January 1 by 2.8%. So you have additional taxes left in your pocket. We are not adjusting the uh, royalty structure for uh, uh, non-renewable resources. We think it's working fairly well. And I'm going to indicate this. Uh, some of the media said, well, we were being overly optimistic on our potash for the revenue. Well, we work with the industry. It's not just, you know, OK, let's use 900 million a year, 400 million. We work with the industry, and we're pretty confident that the amount of, uh, of tonnage, the 10.2 million tons that we have built into the budget, is exactly the same amount as last year. Not, not, uh, not moving up. We have a uh, um, projection for the value of a ton of potash that is, is, uh, is pretty, I think, pretty firm. And we were very encouraged on, uh, on the Tuesday, uh, Campodex signed a 500,000 ton sale with China. Uh, at a price, uh, I think it was $470, yeah, thank you, which is even better than the price that we're using in our budget. So, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty confident. But we're also confident in adding additional revenue dollars because we have a unique position in this province. Companies who have been investing literally billions of dollars into enhancements in the potash industry, they can use those as a write-off. And they have been. They've been using that as a write-off and now we're going to we're going to reap the benefit because many of those investments have been written off, and we're going to see enhanced uh, dollars to uh, to uh, uh, our our treasuries. Very quickly, I'm going to talk a little bit about the promises we made. Some promises in the election campaign, not over the top. Those promises, in fact, total about eight, eighty-three million dollars, and we either initiated the start of those promises or we fully implemented them. And here's some of them. <clears throat> Many of you have heard of these, so I'll just be very, very brief. The first time home buyer's tax credit, $10,000 of a purchase of a first time home, that means you have an $1,100 non refundable tax credit implemented. 
Uh, we said we were going to extend the PSD exemption on children's clothing to uh, age 17 and under, done. And we have expanded the active families tax benefit to those 17 and under. So any, any children in that age group, up to $150 worth of expense can be used, uh, done. We indicated that we were going to, we promised during the campaign, 2,000 more child care spaces over, over the course of our term. We have uh, uh, in, implemented a policy this year to begin with 500 new child care spaces. We promised that we would create something called the Saskatchewan Advantage Scholarship. We were talking at our table about the, the riots literally in Montreal with the students uh, protesting. What we said is that for every grade 12 graduate, you're going to basically, as a grade 12 grad, you're going to get a $2,000 voucher. It's going to be four or $500 vouchers that says you can take those vouchers one at a time each and every year to a post-secondary institution in Saskatchewan, and you can apply that against tuition. So the U of R will now have maybe more students coming in because they're going to have a $500 credit towards that tuition. We've been made significant pro progress uh, in the first term dealing with people with disabilities. And we wanted to make sure that the Saskatchewan Assured Income for Disabilities Program continues, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, additional dollars being provided in, in that program. For seniors, we said that we needed to ensure that we continue to move on the, on the seniors' income plan. I want to tell you a little bit about it because uh, there's a bit of a pushback by some that's, that's not very valid. When we became government four years ago, the seniors income plan, uh, the amount uh, uh, per month was $90. That had not changed since uh, in 16 years. It was $90 16 years before that. We immediately doubled that, and in fact, we increased it to up to $190 per month. This year's budget, for those who qualify under the seniors income plan, that $190 is going to be increased to $240. In other words, another $50 per month, which is $600 a year. You do the math. So those are the kinds of things that we're going to continue to ensure that seniors, that seniors who, who struggle, that indeed we're going to be able to, uh, to uh, meet that. We doubled uh, this benefit for low-income seniors, and by the end of our term, we're in fact going to triple that benefit from what they used to re re receive. A little bit about health care. We've made some, some promises there. It's up on the board because Healthcare is, is one of the most important issues to people in Saskatchewan. Maybe it always will be, I don't know. We spend a lot of money on healthcare. And we continue to do that. The good thing about it, we used to have uh, expenditures of 70 or better percent, 70, uh, 7 percent or 8 percent. We're now below 5 percent on our health budget in terms of, of, of an increase. Uh, it's high, but it's also uh, you know being being lower each and every year because of the good work that's being done at, at uh, regional health authorities. We're looking at a whole number of models. I just want to quickly talk a little bit about the Lean Initiative. Health was one of the first ministries to implement the Lean Initiative. In fact, we're going to be building a brand new hospital at Gusto that is going to be built on floor plans and, and construction that the architects are going to work with that is uh, that is involving lean initiative. It's going to save steps, walking steps. It's going to save money of, of operating into the future. And I think that that's, that's, that's critical. We began the surgical wait list initiative uh, not too long ago, about two years ago. And we added some money there to start moving uh, the surgical time uh, wait $60.5 million is going towards the surgical waitlist initiative. And that's our that's to keep our promise because we said that by 2014, we don't want anyone waiting longer than three months for surgeries if they if they indeed have to have surgery. What this will do, this, this additional $60.5 million, if you look at the before the initiative to where we're going to be this year, 8,000 more surgeries are going to be done because of the, this initiative there. Before. So you can you can picture that if we had done nothing, eight thousand more people would be sitting on a wait list this year uh, rather than having their surgery. <clears throat> we uh, have promised that we were going to move forward with a very successful uh, rescue program in Alberta on Stars, and we have allocated five point five million dollars to to kick that off as well. <clears throat> One of the other I already mentioned, Moostra Hospital. We have also indicated that we need to move forward on the provincial hospital in North Battleford. If anybody has been in North Battleford Hospital uh, and toured that place, it's well over 100 years old and it looks like it. Uh, it's a 
Washington City. It's not a good facility. We've indicated that a couple of years ago. Minister McMorris has been working hard on that one, and we're going to continue to move forward on the North Battleford Hospital, and we've allocated $5 million to get into the design and the planning and all those things, of course, take time, so that's the $5 million. Don't get them started. <clears throat> one, one very successful program, I mean, all of them, I think everyone in this room probably has been touched by cancer one way or the other. Uh, one of the very effective programs last year that we implemented was the colorectal screening program, and this year we're, we're in fact adding $4 million more to the colorectal screening program to make it province-wide. Last year it was into a, a pilot situation. In, in education, uh, you've heard a lot about the formula, the brand new transition funding formula for education. Uh, there were, I mean, we worked on this for three years, and we've worked on it with our partners. Okay, so don't let opposition or media say, oh, well, this came from, you know, from Lesbian. It did not. We've been working on uh, this for three years. I was education minister when I started this, this discussion, so I know exactly what was going on. But we needed to implement a new formula. The old foundation operating grant, you often refer to it as FOG, the FOG grant. <laughs> Board members said, hey, it's in the FOG. Uh, no, it's not working anymore. You need, to, you need to change it. So that's exactly what we did. But it, you know, we have moved to a different system of funding school boards, and as a result of uh, no longer relying on assessment, there were there were inadequacies in, in that formula. And we moved to a new formula. We're cushioning it, an additional 10 million beyond the increase that we were actually doing to to K to 12 education was used to make sure that uh, that uh, we were bound. All right, a couple of things that are not so good. You know, when you uh, make some choices. You have to also ensure that you are remain balanced and you make some choices that, that uh, many of you have heard in the news in the last 48 hours that some are, are not too happy with. The uh, uh, Seniors and Children's Job Plan uh, has not been changed since 2007, uh, and we are raising that from $15 per prescription to $20 per prescription. But I want to emphasize, even with that increase, it still remains one of the best uh, drug plans in all of Canada. So that's something to, uh, to uh, keep in mind. We made a decision. We made a decision about, about an industry uh, as we looked at it that uh, was introduced, and this is about the uh, Film Employment Tax Credit. Film Employment Tax Credit was introduced in 1998 for a new industry. It was to help develop a new industry in 1998. Since 1998, you as taxpayers, the government has uh, contributed $100 million uh, in the way of, of tax credits. We made a decision in looking at priorities. Where, do we, where are we, we going to find money to put $4 million into the colorectal screening program, or whether we're going to look at child care spaces, or do we continue to, to look at, by the way, not $8 million. We did an assessment. Uh, you know, the, the, the whole industry has changed dramatically, and if Saskatchewan is going to be competitive and say, look, we want to attract, we would have had to increase that number substantially. We made a decision, no. And indeed, the uh, tax credit will be wound down. This year, we'll save three, $3 million uh, because there are films that have registered, and we're going to we're going to uh, continue to ensure that that contract is fulfilled, and that's why you're seeing a five million dollar in, in, uh, expense line there. We made a decision about enterprise regions. Many have been uh, at, at, the, at these enterprise region levels have said, you know, these are local decisions. These are don't tell, don't let government, the provincial government, tell us what we have to do out in Meadow Lake or out in Moosevin or or wherever. We said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Why should the province be dictating what the economic uh, development should be in an area? But we also said, well, if you're going to be making those decisions, you should be funding it as well. And we transferred that responsibility to the municipalities. We believe there are many great economic initiatives going on, but now they're going to be the responsibility of the municipalities. Because we have, as I said the other day, we have downloaded. We have downloaded on municipalities. We downloaded revenue. And municipalities now, every city in the province of Saskatchewan, by the way, since 2007, will have had their revenue sharing dollars doubled. Doubled. So this year, our revenue sharing formula is in place. It's been in place now for two years. And the formula is, and I'll be quick, for, uh, for uh, the revenue sharing dollars come from PSD. PSD is in the public accounts document. As soon as our March 31st year comes to an end, the public account accounts documents are produced, and there's a number that's there for the uh, PSD. One of those five points 
In other words, 20% is dam revenue share. And over the years, last year, the revenue sharing to municipalities was increased by 29.5%. Why? Because the economy is doing well. That's the reason for setting up that formula. We said we want to make sure that municipalities uh, benefit from a growing economy. This year, 9.5% increase to, uh, to municipalities through revenue sharing, the highest transfer to any of our third parties. And uh, that's, uh, that's something that they wanted, that's something that the province wanted, and I'm glad to see that, that it's there. Finally, just to summarize, I think you can see that our budget is about keeping the Saskatchewan again. We've, we've kept our election promises, we've kept our budget balanced, we've kept our spending sustainable, and I think those decisions will allow us to keep our economy strong. And uh, with all of those goals, uh, you can, uh, I believe that that population is going to continue to rise. We're going to see investments. Uh, the projection is for this next year, the uh, private and public investment in the province of Saskatchewan to $20 billion. Those are, that's, that's a great story to tell. And I'm so fortunate to be the finance minister of a great province. And I thank you very much for your indulgence and questions. Because you get it all. 
you know, there's no question that you know, many of you know, of course, I've had triple heart bypass. Yeah, I'm going to have my cardiac surgery either in Regina or Saskatoon, but can I have other things done, like a colonoscopy in, in Yorkton or Lloydminster or in, in Humboldt? Absolutely. And I think we're going to be able to better utilize this. That's why this extra $4 million into the colorectal screening program to make that product wide. So that now other areas in the province can, uh, can ensure that they can uh, do some of these procedures and lessen the pressure on the China and the Constitution. Maybe one or two left here, Kevin, works for me. You might be able to draw a little bit of a background in the educational portfolio. But so in terms of the license practice of the nurses program, so the question is, what was involved in the LPN program? Is it possible to consider transferring those credits into a registered nursing program? Well, my, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, up on post-secondary area, but my, my interest, of course, we were always in the K-12 area. Uh, there, there is a, there is, a, there have, has been a lot of discussions between the LPN program and the RN program. Uh, in fact, I know that there's even the first reason to encourage LPNs to become RNs. Uh, uh, Laura Ross did a lot of work on, on, on uh, working with, uh, you know, uh, attracting more nurses. Uh, clearly, there, you know, there's going to be discussions. There's going to be discussion, and if there are things that individuals already can look at and say, you know, I'm running into some obstacles, we need to uh, we need to look at what Alberta is doing. Well, we've done that. I can tell you, uh, you know, not just this question, but in a lot of our uh, labor discussions and negotiations, we have looked at something called the Western Canadian average. We need to be competitive with our Western Canadian partners, and we've done that in negotiations. And we also are you know, are going to look at something like education to ensure that we have continuity across the piece. So that's uh, a valid point. But I would suggest contact uh, uh, Minister, don't even contact Minister of Health because even though it's a health related thing, it's Minister Norris. It's the uh, it's the uh, advanced uh, education uh, ministry that would be able to tell you exactly whether something's wrong or, or what maybe you could identify as something that needs to be changed. The final question here might just be a little bit of commentary or feedback for you.